Okay, we were looking for mass capacitors and we said there is a, we always start with P substrate. Whatever is true for P substrate with opposite polarity of voltages, it is true for N substrate, okay. So right now we look for P substrate for simple reason, P substrate gives what we call N channel devices and we know N channel devices are better in performance compared to P channel devices as far as their area wise and threshold wise values are concerned uh, simply because the mobility of electrons is higher than mobility of holes even at the surface. And because of that N channel MOSFETs are most used as drivers and P channel devices are used as loads but in CMOS this statement will be has to be modified there is no load there is no driver both coexist then we will have to do something to P channel so that it becomes equivalent of N channels, okay. Digital course will tell you more about it, what is the logical effort one needs to make it equal, okay. Okay, so we said that if VGS is positive or negative, since the electric field is from bottom to upwards, holes starts accumulating at the surface and since holes are more like a metallic system, so you only get a uh, net capacitance of oxide which is C ox decided by epsilon ox by T ox. Please remember capacitances in our case are mostly defined as per unit area. Though we may, may monitor actual capacitance in products, but the theory always will have C ox which is epsilon ox by T ox simply because Q is equal to C V the basic Gauss's law has to be satisfied and Q we use there as charge density. And since this is per unit area there, C is also per unit area here because voltage cannot be per unit area. Voltage can be per unit centimeter which will be fields but otherwise there is nothing called per unit area. So everywhere you find that I normally use C ox as epsilon ox by T ox. We also said that if I apply VGS positive and small, the first thing we see in the electric field is now downwards the holes are repelled down uh, because of this and since holes leave the surface there are acceptors which are negatively charged appears there and this is called depletion layer. Uh, we also assume that there are no oxide charges as of now and therefore if the D vector is continuous then we say epsilon ox into T ox is epsilon S into T epsilon this is electric field. Uh, the reason why I started using this capital other kind of E is because this normal E is actually energy in band diagram. So this E and that E should not get confused. E capital E is normally given for energy that is Q into V and therefore I normally write zeta kind of E for my evaluation. You can use capital E also there is nothing wrong with it. Now if uh, depletion layer will keep enhances if I increase VGS because we can see from here we will prove this the depletion layer is proportional to twice case epsilon naught psi we will see what is psi surface potential by Q and A. So if one can see from here that if I want larger charges to appear there are two ways either this NA should have been larger which is fixed by substrate so we cannot care so XD must increase as the QM that is the charge on the metal plate VGS increasing means metal charge increasing which means there should be more and more depletion layer widths so that the charge is balanced by Gauss's law net charge is 0 across the loop, okay. Now this theory is very simple and uh, as I say uh, right from 7 standard we have been telling capacitors, uh, uh, resistors and inductors and even after your masters VAD you will only learn that much okay nothing more. Now if we initially when the VGS is small the electric field due to the depletion layer is also very small relatively and since the electric field is small please remember in semiconductor whether it is depletion layer or neutral region constantly whole electrons are generated this is called thermal generation. There is a rate of generation depends on generation time. Now if these carriers are generated they will also have recombination time. So by the time they are actually replay, uh, taken out by electric field they may recombine. 
So, there will not be any contribution from free electrons and holes because they will be able to recombine the electric field is very small. However, if I start increasing the voltage at the gate, then this electric field across the depletion layer will also enhance and there is a possibility that the force on electron holes may be ex exceeding now and if that happens, this is what we say. Okay, before that maybe in the depletion region, I am sorry, before we come to uh, inversion, since there are only two capacitances involved due to the depletion region which is called semiconductor capacitance and the oxide capacitance. Look at the figure, one capacitance due to oxide, one capacitance due to semiconductor or depletion layer. So, they are in series and series capacitance is always this dash is only to take care of area nothing more. So, the net capacitance is Cx dash by Cs upon Cx dash by Cs dash. Since Cs dash will start decreasing as voltage starts increasing, please remember as Cs dash increasing, uh, as voltage starts increasing, depletion layer width in increases. So, epsilon by x will be actually small decreasing. If Cs dash decreases, the net capacitance will also decrease. As voltage increases, Cs dash decreases, therefore the net capacitance start also decreasing. That is why in the high frequency CV you see decrease in capacitance as you increase VGS. You can see from here the capacitance start decreasing as I increase VGS. Okay. However, this VGS is still not large enough to create large electric fields in the depletion layer, but once this electric field is large enough that is VGS is sufficiently positive, there is a possibility of whole electrons get separated by the electric field in this depletion layer, holes will move down because the electric field is downwards and electrons will start piling up at the interface, that is something very interesting can happen holes will move down on the depletion layer and electrons will start moving towards the interface. Since there is a silicon dioxide, electrons cannot cross the barrier there, but they will sit at the silicon interface, silicon silicon dioxide interface. Since we started with a P substrate and the layer just below oxide has become electrons are negative now, we say you are in inversion region, you have inverted the carriers, I have inverted the layer there. We have P substrate and now we have negative N free carriers available. So, as larger the VGS you apply, more and more electrons will come and then the charge balance required, there are how many charges are now there? One is the depletion layer charge plus the inversion charge, but the way inversion charge increases with electric field is e to the power something Q size by kind of KT. Whereas in the case of depletion layer, how it increases? Root upon is proportional to XDN, which is proportional to root of psi s, okay? which means which is stronger, exponential terms are very strong. So, whatever additional charge you put on the metal will be now easily supplied by inversion charge and depletion charge does not exceed. Though it does increase, one cannot say it does not, but in ratio it may be 1 to 1000. So, we say depletion layer becomes constant and all the charges are now made available through inversion charges. So, the balance of net charge 0 can be now attained through the available free electrons rather than from the depletion layer. So, there will be a fixed depletion charge plus inversion charge is equal to whatever VGS you apply corresponding to that whatever metal charge you have and that always will be net charge will be 0. Please remember why inversion is stronger because the way if we solve the Poisson's equation there, we will be able to figure out with continuity equation, we will be able to prove that it is e to the power psi s kind of terms. So, psi s increases surface potential, the carrier generation is very fast okay? and therefore, this electrons are available in larger number even at smaller change in the VGS. So, you do not need to increase depletion layer. Since the capacitance now, if the charges here are not very, very large right now or the variation due in this charge density is not very small, large, we will see this is what we want to prove later. The net capacitance is now whatever is the maximum 
bulk charge you create here that divided by x d max x d max q a x d max this what is x d max at the potential when v g s depletion layer becomes almost constant that is called x d max someone asked other day what is x d max so i was little worried but now as a microelectronic student at least if you do not know mos cv probably leave the group as fast as you can okay the value of vgs at which this then you know what is the inversion layer what we call threshold we define a threshold voltage as that voltage of vgs when the number of electron and electron density here electron per unit per cc is exactly equal to the substrate concentration is that clear if na is the substrate concentration na holds so when the electron concentration is exactly equal to na at the interface or surface then we say we are in a strong inversion case but where inversion will start whenever electron starts there inversion has already set in for one vgs even if the electrons are smaller than number of holes available in substrate even then inversion has set in this is called weak inversion this is called weak inversion but what is the definition of threshold we give we'll give it for a strong inversion and in strong inversion we made a mischief we say okay whenever number of electron per cc is exactly equal to nh at that voltage we'll say threshold has the voltage vgs is actually the threshold voltage that's the definition not very correct but it's okay okay that's the way defined i define that way okay that's the way it is so if i plot capacitance versus voltage characteristics this of course again professor vasi will tell you in more details so please look for that uh if you see very carefully if i have a uh, two curve i shown capacitance versus voltage for a p substrate mos capacitor and i figure out for minus vgs its accumulation and therefore oxide capacitance is constant if i increase vgs the depletion layer starts enhancing so the net semiconductor capacitance decreases so net capacitance decreases and somewhere here at this vgs sufficient electrons are made available so we say inversion has started and depletion layer capacitance is constant if that is constant c ox series to c depletion is constant so it becomes constant this is called high frequency cv the assumption here is that the frequency is high enough which is typically 1 megahertz to 10 megahertz one is standard but many people use 10 megahertz even you can use 100 megahertz what is the way capacitance are monitored you can do through a have you any time thought about the meters which you see lcr meters or how do they monitor capacitors all that we are doing we are passing a current through 1 upon j omega c and measuring the voltage vac by ic is 1 upon j omega c if i know my omega i know my capacitor that's all that we do okay so the frequency of measurement is this omega so ac signal which i am applying to measure a capacitance it has a frequency so this high frequency cv is this measurement frequency which is around 1 megahertz and above at those frequencies we say no other charges follow this change in capac uh, change in voltage if ac is become positive negative if the charges at the surface do not respond to that only depletion is fixed so it remains constant there oxide capacitance is without this you are measuring so cox plus a series of cs dash or cs is the all that capacitance you will see in all these cases so capacitance is always seen as constant once the inversion sets in however if the measurement frequency and we have a lot of things to show later if the measurement frequency is smaller maybe 1 hertz to 10 hertz then this charges change in inversion layer charge change in dip, everyone can follow this low frequency signal or voltage and if that follows then some of these capacitance will come dq by dv is capacitance if the change of charge is followed by v then we say there is a capacitance so then the other capacitance will start also appearing in your circuit and then you will see 
if large at the after inversion at then we will show you this that the oxide capacit uh, the net capacitance climb backs to the oxide capacitance okay. So, low frequency after inversion you climb back to the oxide capacitance. We will see this little later few minutes how does how do we evaluate everything out of this why are I am spending this time because at the end of the day for me the mass device performance which maybe I will show you first so that Okay, I will just show you this slide. Of course, this right now we are not done all the terms here, but the threshold voltage in real life is given by phi m s plus minus 2 phi plus minus if n a it is 2 phi f plus and if it is n d because charges are opposite it will become minus 2 phi f minus q ox by q ox is the oxide charge and we want to monitor that minus ok here also we should write plus minus because minus q n a x d or plus q n d x d depends on the substrate you start with but this is always minus. So, minus q n a x d makes it plus plus q n d x d will make it minus please remember very interesting thing phi m s is always negative okay always we will show you this for a p substrate or n channel device 2 phi f is positive q ox is always positive okay so q ox by c ox is always negative q b which is q n a x d minus will become positive so this is positive term this is positive term this is negative term this is negative term so what can happen they will subtract okay it may happen in some cases that if q ox is very large then this plus this will become larger than 2 phi f plus q v by c ox or q n a x d by c ox. What does that mean? V t will become negative. For n channel device we always want threshold to be positive turn on ok V g s should exceed V t to start currents ok. Now that may not happen. So, one of the technology worries are how much q ox I can maintain ok. So, that this plus this is always smaller than this plus this, this is something. Whereas, in the case of peach channel device, this is minus because this is plus q n a. So, this is minus, this is minus, this is minus, this is minus. So, all four terms in p channel devices are negative so vt for a p channel device is always negative but larger these values more minus vt will appear since larger vt means you will require larger supply to create the same current so p channel devices will require larger threshold uh, larger supply voltage to get the same currents vgs minus vt is that clear because vt is are negative so there also we must reduce q ox because then vt becomes le lesser negative okay somehow should increase 2 phi f ok or decrease 2 phi f. So, doping should be such. So, if you can adjust your doping and uh, oxide charges in technology then I will be able to get V t n equal to V t p in circuits I want n channel devices should have same as p channel V t's sign wise V t n is equal to absolute value of V t p um, ok magnitude of V t p that is what we say symmetric circuits. So, we will like to do that that means some way in technology for p channel I must control very strongly. So, that v t becomes as small as possible which is closer to because n channel will be smaller why it will be smaller because two terms are positive two terms are negative. So, it will be smaller. So, to if I want little more positive I must increase actually to phi f ok. So, that I get larger the doping I will get more v t out of it. So, larger V t if I want I can always increase the doping. In the case of p channel I want 2 phi f to decrease. So, I will actually reduce the substrate doping ok. That is why p channel areas are different from n channel areas in all CMOS circuits ok. Ok, so this is my expression. The uh, term here phi m minus phi s we will look into it time permitting. Since the work function of the gate whether it is aluminum, gold or titanium or any other molybdenum or any other this, 
the work function we will define little later is the energy required for an electron to take out of a metal is called its work function in vacuum. Okay. Since that is the material property, semiconductor work function of course is depend on the doping in the semiconductors. So one can see from phi m minus phi s, phi m depending on what kind of metals I use, this phi m minus phi s can change. Okay. One of the recent techniques of last 5, 6 years is called work function engineering. So the threshold is actually adjusted by the metal which I put okay. because I cannot then play too much about the other value. So I say okay, let us look at the other metals which probably can vary my Vt. Okay. This is something in nanometer, 45 nanometer down or even 28 nanometers have not same aluminum of course have been given up long time but other materials are looked into whose work function difference is more controllable and one can choose out of that. Molesilicide for example is very strong kind of candidate for that, okay, molybdenum, okay. okay. So this is why I say why phi ms is so very crucial but phi ms is a term in Vt please remember so that has to be looked into. Qox is always positive, always positive and very close to the interface, very close to the interface inside oxide. That means this term just cannot be avoided. I can minimize it. How much minimum I should have that it should not have much influence is all that we can try. Okay. Then the FIF of course is called Fermi potential which is nothing but intrinsic Fermi in energy minus the actual Fermi energy uh, Fermi level divided by Q. And if you look at a mass device current, okay, let us say for any of the device, the saturation current ID sat as it is called is half mu C ox W by L VGS minus VT square 1 plus lambda VDS. So any change in VT, any change in mu is going to affect my current and current means in circuit everything depends on current available for a given bias or given VGS. For this value how much IDS I will get is decided by what is mu I get and what is the threshold I get. So the technology people are forced to worry about mu and Vt because the current people are telling this is what I want. Okay. Because of the circuit performance is decided by charging current for the capacitor I want for a smaller voltage large currents of course power dissipation may increase we will see whether then the other people say no reduce the current okay. then what do we do. So we play games on that. Okay, as much as possible. So this is why we say technology, uh, why we looked into all this theory because they will come and tell me I want this Vt and plus minus so much and I want this mobility. Okay. Now I, I am forced to now work to my this, I will have to go back and think, see in theory which terms actually affects me and the threshold as well as in the mobility and those processes or those uh, terms I must control in my process because that is how the MOS circuit technology will actually perform 6 gigahertz Intel processor may want to make 10 or something or it is okay saying is very simple the power may boost by 10 times to 100 times then it can be done but I want power to be 1 tenth we want the speed to be double this is something which is triangle as I say you push one the other will go down okay. So that is where the technology people are called in say Are thoda madad karo bhai. Okay. So one method of course is to choose materials which are higher mobility itself okay. so that uh, one probably do not have to too much worry about silicon okay. but we do not want to use silicon technologies. Okay. As I say 2050 may nahi but 2050 that you can live on CMOS ke upar bhi research kar lo. Ye mera wada hai aapko. Hmm. Silicon will never go. If anything else, the money may will matter. If I, you know, if the cost of one thing is one rupee and the other is thousand rupees, even if it is five times better, three times better, I say, yaar, ek rupee hai. <laughs> so that is the game. Technology is essentially money related. Okay. Economics hai. Okay, so one of the things which we will look into later. Uh, is this q ox which as I say in this case I have said q ox is 0 
and fire mesh is also 0, it is called ideal capacitor. What is it called? Fire mesh is 0. What does fire mesh 0 means? The work function of semiconductor is same as work, this is very really impossible, but assume and if we assume it is called theoretical CV, ideal CV, okay, in which fire mesh is 0 and we say there are no oxide charges, okay. Then whatever Vt we get is essentially ideal Vt which is not the reality, but from there since I know theoretically what is ideal, what I can do then? If I measure something then I know the change and I know oh, this is because of this, is that clear? That is exactly what we do now. The, if there are fixed charges which are called oxide charges which is essentially called trivalent silicon sitting at the silicon silicon dioxide interface inside oxide. Okay. Uh, there are positive charges and their density, please remember this word density is always per centimeter square okay. and if your charge density it is charge coulombs per centimeter square q by centimeter square. So, there, this positive charge will always exist, do what you do, they may be smaller, they may be smaller or larger depending on the technology you use. So, can you think why in 1970s everyone including TI or every company, Intel or user are working those in silicon IC process, were working on P channel devices till 1978 or 76, okay. 4004 was P channel microprocessor. Okay. Only the first 8080 when it came, it was in channel 1. Why? Because this QOX could not be controlled, so it VT used to become 0 minus and therefore no enhancement. Okay. So, we said, okay, let us work on P channel, at least, okay, I will increase 10 volt power supply, but it will enhance uh, VGS minus VT I can get. Okay. So, all initial processors were P channel devices simply because oxide charge was not within your technology control. Now of course, um, great technology experts are around which can probably reduce this number to a great extent. Also one can see about this Q by Cox, this term will become smaller when Cox is larger. If Cox is larger means what? The oxide thickness should be smaller, this is what is happening it helped you when you score scale down the oxide thickness reduced. So, your Cox increased, but that Cox increase has some other problem where the current also start increasing. So, power started increasing. Okay. So, there are issues then the area started building. So, you have, you have to adjust many parameters together to get something called optimal values. Okay. So, typically if I want fixed charges it should be of the order of 10 to power 10 per centimeter square or 1.6 into 10 to power minus 19 into 10 to power 10 is minus 9. So, coulombs this is the kind of charge density I am expecting 10 to power 10 per centimeter square. What I may get is 10 to power 11 and whole my work is to see that this becomes closer to 1 into 2 or 2 into 3 into 10 to power 10 kind of numbers and that is my process, okay. that is why processing is very crucial. How do I actually push my wafers in oxidation furnace? How fast I take them out? How much is the ambient I create? What is the laminar I could make there inside? Is the temperature remaining constant? Is the wafer was properly cleaned? All these issues may decide the fixed charges okay. and that is something very, very crucial for us. Okay. Apart from this fixed charges which are always which is called incomplete oxidation system called trivalent silicon, this is the kind of bond you get some other day, some other time what how trivalents are obtained, but let us look at it further. Apart from this we kept saying in the uh, clean room environment we were talking that there should be at no cost sodium be inside, okay. sodium or potassium or first group such elements be inside. The reason is sodium has a strong affinity, affinity with water, water has strong affinity with silicon. Okay. So, silica normal silica which is called soda glass has huge amount of sodium in fact that is why it is called soda glass, sodium based glass. 
okay, SiO2 with Na2O inside okay, as a bond. Now, if this is soda glass, huge sodium, there is a density may be 10 to the power 14 per centimeter square, so much large sodium. Now, the problem with sodium is not okay. I have no objection if sodium present, if it does not hurt me, but if it hurts me, I will have to check what how it hurts. It hurts something normally since 5 ms is also negative, or if I apply plus VGS with reference to semiconductor, I figure out the sodium which is well inside the silicon dioxide is placed everywhere. Now, and they are ions, NAs are ions, at little energy they actually break the bond. Okay. The sodium ions have a tendency, actually they are very, uh, they are quite large drift velocity in the oxide which is rare, they, have, they can diffuse faster. If I apply VGS which is the direction of electric field plus to minus, so where sodium will go? Towards interface any charge which reaches at the interface will be seen in the Vt as a Qox plus QNA. Okay. That if okay, one time I did it and I find fine, chalo, pocha di avda, as soon as I change the temperature or I change the bias which I in circuit I will, the sodium will come back partially here there. So, what it means? Vt will be constantly varying as the mobile charge keep moving in the oxide thickness. Okay. That I cannot tolerate. If Vt keeps varying, my currents will varying, my speed will varying, my power will vary. That certainly I will not appreciate. Okay, and therefore somehow this mobile charges should be minimized and should be less around 10 to the power 10 per centimeter square. Is all that I may tolerate. Okay, preferably zero, but zero of course is nothing. So as low 10 to the power 9 people are now getting per centimeter square. So why sodium comes? V, okay. the biggest source of sodium is V. Okay. However, we wear everything and close everything so that at least that perspiration is does not come out. Okay. But there are materials which are self absorbed like even uh, polyesters, uh, polymers, they actually pick up sodium okay, over the time. Now, they as soon as you start air conditioning initially it heats, sodium is released. So, come what may aluminum, alumina as we make, there is a sodium sitting on it. Okay. So, as you move on this, it scratches and sodium is released. So, do not think sodium is, you, any clean room is sodium free. Of course, the per centimeter square is very small, that is density is very small, but it is not that I can make it 0. Quartz here which I have also will have some sodium. So, in every sense and I am putting a 900 degree, 1000 degree, I am allowing sodium to really come. Okay. So, no time sodium can be made 0. All that I will do is to minimize sodium content in the facilities as well as from me. So, for me at least I know I will cover all of my, myself from everywhere, two specs and small, because, but you have to breathe. You cannot say I will not breathe. So, that that is the where you know whole problems, you breathe and there is a sodium. Okay. Whatever filter you put here, uh, some part will come because air has to come in. Okay. So, in air and this has to be done, so there will be a sodium inside, do what you. Okay. So, please remember if anyone says is sodium free, I, I statement is good, nothing is sodium free in the world. Okay, sodium is omnipresent, but let us look at the other side. If sodium is less in your body, you start getting cramps. So, sodium is very relevant material. Okay. So, do not think sodium is bad. Okay. Larger sodium, blood pressure increases, so you will have to reduce your sodium. So, all problems with sodium. Okay. At old age, I know everything now. Okay. okay. So, this mobile charges which are essentially sodium based probably have to be controlled and we will see how we monitor all of this. So, what are the charges I said? I said there can be fixed charge, there can be mobile charge and there can be the third charge which is worrying me most in fact. Okay. The last but not the least important is the interface charge and that is something which is probably partly controllable, partly not controllable. Now, if you look at any surface of any material, solid material, 
the top atoms of any materials the upper bonds will not be satisfied the lower bonds will be satisfied but the surface will always have one bond in the air or two bonds in the air okay now this is called shockley states or tan states this bonds which are available at the surface and they may be in large numbers because so many atoms in the surface so many bonds are available so we say these positive charges or dangling bonds as well not positive dangling bonds are such a large numbers that they can be called they are actually named as shockley states or tan states however as soon as you cover this surface by any other material some of these bonds will get satisfied so the states surface surface states now will become called interface states and their number will decrease is that point clear from the surface there are too many i put oxide on the top now silicon to silicon dioxide some will take bonds okay some may still not be able to bond okay so whatever is not able to bond is a dangling bond sitting at the interface okay any charge in semiconductor uh, this is equivalent to saying there is a charge state or energy level in the band gap okay what is any charge they are sitting they will create an energy level in the band gap of semiconductor what is the problem with energy any this they act like a trap centers so worry is that if you put something charge there they may act like a traps so sometime interface states are also called interface traps okay they are also called interface traps now this interface traps are not a constant quantity unfortunately okay for example over the if you apply larger voltage which is called constant stress for a given time or you increase thermal stress or the wafer is being held in a higher temperature ambiance which in a real circuit will happen you are in a space or you are or it is re receiving radiations now all in cases this so called interface states are not very much fixed they actually change okay the problem start there if they are fixed there is some control and if they don't are not fixed where do they affect now one can see from that mass transistor theory or mass transistor somewhere maybe i draw over here okay ek minute i'll come back to that this is my source drain and this is my oxide okay now if i create an inversion layer here by applying vgs positive let's say why the current flows current flows from so electrons flows from source to drain due to the electric field lateral electric field called drift currents now these electrons are not in the bulk alone they are near the surface if there is a charge state here and this carriers which is in conduction band you say now finds possibility of trapping okay there are two traps there actually one is this silicon and silicon dioxide are two different material so there is a physical and undulations like this which are flatness you make mirror polish Even then, they, between the two materials, there cannot be one-to-one -one this. Okay, so there is a surface traps because of the undulations and surface trap because of interface states. So, if the carriers are affected by interface states, then the mobility will start decreasing, and that is my worry because that current I D Z I looked into is proportional to mu. Okay, so if mobility goes down. my current goes down my everything goes down okay i am suddenly worried okay so this dit where are in a interface state density what we are saying we are worried too much about it because we feel that also is one but as i say even from vgs going from minus to plus you will find dit is are not constant so we say okay at the bandage may be anything in the mid gap how much is they are the one more likely to in you know, any trap near the mid gap near eg by 2 will have maximum probability of trapping by electrons or holes okay 50 per recombination center 50% probability here or here so that they are the worst 
Anyone closer to valence band only holes probably can trap. Anyone closer to only electrons can trap. But in between, they can do any mischief. The problem is exactly this: the, the CV as we show, they keep changing there as we move from bandage to bandage. Okay, and that is our major worry. Okay, how much I, how much DIT really I have, or any uh, number of charge density there, that will influence my mu. Okay. And also it is indirectly not seen, but we will see even Vt will keep varying with that. Because if you see the Vt variation here, this QR essentially contains a term fixed charge plus QIT. What are charges in the interface? There are fixed charges plus interface charge plus mobile charge. All these charges at the interface will contribute to net QOx, which means Vt will get also affected by QIT or whatever charges in interface and they are varying. So, Vt will keep varying. So, my worries are not just this, I am not only worried about mobility, but I am also worried about my threshold getting not fixed. Okay. So, why we are so much worried in technology? Because people will insist, because all designers, when I am as a designer teach, I will say the same thing. They all blame technology people. Okay. I told you I want this, okay, we gave you something, technology people, they say no, but this is not good enough. So, every now and then the technology people were hammered, now it is last 10 years, it is the other way. We can do anything, what you can do? Now, tech, designers do not have any options, they cannot do much thing, they cannot think bigger system, they cannot do anything, oh low power, now a new thing, okay, low power karo. Oxide but low, you will. So, every time a designer does not get his performance, he looks at process people, okay. please help or uh, you cannot do either way, but that is the way work. With it. So, now in 2011 to onwards at 5, 8 onwards, no designer should forget technology or no technology should know not about design because they individually uh, together only can now solve the real issues which the newer technologies are facing. 7 nanometer process, if you do, you are designing a chip, of course 7 is, there is already circuit is made, so I am not bluffing, 11 is already there, 7 is already there. 7 nanometer chip has huge technology problems, okay. So, what is the problem? 1 out of 1000 chips work, then who will work for it, okay. So, the reliability is major worry. So, now everything is looked at uh, Intel's chief, what is called Bohr. Mark Bohr is looking into it, how to make reliable circuit, 7 nanometer circuits are available, okay. not in market, in the lab. Okay. So, this is what the process is. So, why process people become very strong? Because at the end of the day, they only can solve the problems. Designers only will sit with the computer and sleep. Only when the process people will come and say, okay, here is the model, here is something. Now, this is a device, this is equivalent models. Start designing. Ah, that's good. Okay. So I already said. Uh, okay. So the as I keep saying, DIT is very very crucial for variety of reasons, and uh, one must somehow control them to less around 10 to power 10 per centimeter square, so that the effect of DIT is minimized. I am not saying it will be 0, but it will be minimized. Same as fixed charges, reduce this QOx term, which includes all of them as small as possible or QOx by COx term in nutshell, then you will be able to actually leave some hope for circuit to function. Okay. So, all technology people should not feel you know that. Uh, that is why some material people must be feeling bad that you know a lot of uh, circuit related things are told. The reason is we are not material scientists, we are VLSI technology people and for us circuit is the ultimate or system is the ultimate. Unko kya chahiye wo hum denge, that is the way it is. So, process people should know what designers want or what device wants and we should be able to give that. Okay. So, 
if I keep correlations, please take it because I am I I work on every every area or I don't work any area now. So because of that, I can tell you where it hurts. Okay. Okay. Uh, typically, time state I say is ten to power twenty per centimeter square. Or sorry, per centimeter square. Okay. And we want to reduce it to as low as ten to power ten per centimeter square, but as soon as you put silicon dioxide on silicon, much of the oxygen will get bonded to silicon, SiO, SiO bonds will be formed. Some which are not able to, they are still dangling and they are called interface states. One of the technique is to pass chlorine during oxidation, that is what we tried. Okay. So, we say this bonds will be picked up by chlorine but chlorine itself has a problem, so we left chlorine. Then we said okay, HCl may be more worrisome, so we use trichloroethane, TCA as it is called. Then it has a carbon content there, so it starts coagulating there. So in 70s it was very interesting technology, anything you can try and you will get something funny. Okay. Now many things known, so not many achievements are in technology as in those days I dip in something and I oh different, oh great. Okay. <laughs> Now it is not so. Okay, is that okay? So I am interested in DIT for control on VT and control on mobility, and therefore I am worried. Okay, I already said. Now uh, forget about all this. VT is fixed charges, interface charges, and mobile charges. All three are actually coming into Vt term, is that correct? So any one of them can hurt you, okay. Of course, sodium can be uh, easily removed, much of it, if you take super clean systems. Fixed charges by technology, by proper oxidation process you follow, Qox can be minimized. There was this time when we worked in 80s when students of mine were working in lab. So I used to do oxidation for most of my students in those days. So many of my PhD students used to say, sir let us do, let me do. I say, okay do it. Then he used to measure CV and he says, sir my charges are 10 to power 11 and yours are 10 to power 2 and 10 to power 10. You do the same thing which I do. I say, that is my hand. That is when I push some things. I do myself do not know what I do, but I push the rack in, I push the thing out. At what rate I do? how long I wait where, which zones is unknown to me, okay. But my mind is set for that. Over the years I know what to do, okay. So even if you do 100% automation, someone has to model this, what I did. So they photograph, they do lot of image processing and then figure out what exactly I was doing. So then computer can be told do this, motor control. So all automation was done by actually monitoring what humans do, okay. But humans are smarter, they always do better than what machines can. So again machines have to learn how much humans can learn, okay. Okay. So these statements are already made, Fermi potentials is twice Kt by QNA or Na by Ni plus or minus. If it is Na by Ni it is plus, if it is Ni by Nd it is minus. Xd max is twice Ks epsilon not psi s. Now psi s is called surface, but I will take the figure just now and uh, that is equal to 2 phi f at inversion. Surface, I will just draw the band diagram quickly and then we will show you actually. Is that okay? So these are the expressions which uh, last time also I gave, I, I am just repeating. This is a net expression which worries us in our controls and therefore technologically if there is a change in substrate doping variation, can you think that same 2 5 will vary? This will vary. So, Vt will vary. So, it is not that whole wafer will have same Vt. So, there is a called Vt map. We actually see how much Vt varies just because of the substrate concentration. So, what should we do? We actually make wells as one, one well I showed you other day in my this, which diff diffusions or implants are fixed by me for all regions. Since I can do much better control on by selective this, I will be able to get more much more control on any or indeeds, okay. 
Therefore, all CMOS processes do not use substrates, okay. They use P wells and N wells to make N channel and P channel devices. Is that clear to you? So, this any NDs are not no more controlled by actually controlling the VTs. It is the doping in the wells which we will do see later in implants. Okay, uh, before I start working again on this capacitance, you can actually write, uh, show, uh, write uh, note down this circuit. Uh, this is called equivalent circuit of a MOS capacitor. Some are in, important in some regions, some are not important in some regions, some are important in frequency terms. So, we will see what it is, but this is called the MOS CV. So, if you are really a mass capacitor man, you should know all these four are very di different grid. This, there is a CP, for this is all P substrate, so we say NH, so CP which is accumulation, CS is the depletion charge or capacitance due to that, then there is an inversion capacitance and there is a interface state capacitance. Why we say this? any charge variation with the voltage leads to capacitance. Q is equal to CV, so dQ by dV is C. So, if charge is varying with voltage, there is an equivalent capacitance associated. Is that clear? This is a basic theory which we use any change in charge with voltage leads to capacitance. Is that clear? So, anywhere you see char change of charge as you change voltage, then you say there is a capacity effect coming in, okay. So, this net capacitance is, this C ox is always in series with this four of them and not all four exist simultaneously, but many of them may, we will see what. So, these are in parallel, what do they mean? They add, they all add. Whereas this is in series means they actually go harmonic way 1 upon C is equal to 1 upon C1 plus 1 upon C2, okay. The semi bulk is depletion, okay. Now the reason is this is taken from Saha's book, the he is defining C, I mean many I have I recently had in but my old sheets have C S there so I wrote that but then I immediately remember to make it bulk. There are four, okay, I will show you the circuit before we come to it, we will show you. Ek minute. A alag region may equivalent capacitance itna rehta hai, actually, okay. So, we want to arrive at for each region, what is the equivalent circuit or equivalent capacitance we get, okay. This is what I am trying to do, okay. So, and this is what I, I, I know all these capacitances adds to each self, not necessarily present all of them. Why? Because during accumulation there will not be any depletion, you know. So, obviously both will not be there, okay. So, those people who do not like physics still wish to know at least or don't, those who like physics is better for them, but uh, those who do not like look at it anyway. Uh, this is a P semiconductor mass capacitor shown here. Uh, typical oxide thickness is T ox. Has a P type semiconductor substrate has a doping of Ne, and this is the metal plate. So it is MOS as we want. And this is the band diagram. The silicon dioxide band gap. This is the conduction band. This is the valence band. Has a eight eight electron volts band gap. Now. Right now assume that the Fermi level in metal and Fermi level in semiconductors were aligned when they brought together. So, phi mass is 0, okay. We will add that term in case in real life what will happen. So, if I put that and I apply positive VGS with reference to substrate which is grounded. Positive VGS means what is energy associated with plus VGS? energy minus QV, okay. So, energy is minus QV. So, which if energy diagram shows upper energy increasing, which side is the energy going down? Going down. So, the Fermi level of this metal 
what is the voltage you apply between the Fermi levels, whatever potential you apply is the separation of the Fermi levels. But the Fermi level will metal should go down because its energy is more negative than Fermi level in semiconductors. So, the difference between EFS and EFM is the applied potential QVGS. Q because it is a voltage, it is an energy diagram, otherwise the difference of potential is VGS. Now please take from me that in all our band theories or all mass capacitance theories, PM junction we do not do, but in case of mass, I always show EFS constant. In PM junction, I will actually say whenever the Fermi level bends, I say current is flowing, that is the word. If there is a change in Fermi level with x d phi by dx, then the current flows j is proportional d phi by dx. Okay. In this case, the across oxide there is no current, there is no DC current across the oxide. So therefore, Fermi level is semiconductor is held constant at zero potential because you are grounded that. With reference to that, now you will measure all other potential. Is that clear to you? So, Fermi level in semiconductor is fixed, but if it is a doped semiconductor, then semiconductor to EVS balance band should be fixed because that is depending on the doping you use. Okay. EI minus EA, EI is called the mid band intrinsic Fermi level, EI minus EF is how far the Fermi level is away from the mid band is the Fermi potential which is phi F. So, it is the 5. Then if I apply initially EF is equal to EFS, the bands will be flat. Is that correct? No bending. But as soon as I apply VGS, this energy goes down. Okay. Which means now applied positive charges at the metal. So, what is that semiconductor charge should receive now? Negative charge. So, the first thing is holes move away. If holes move away, okay, kisi na kal pucha E by KT mein E is Q times the potential. So, Q by KT is 25.8 millivolts at 300 degrees. So, wo E energy wo voltage is very small, thousands are not coming. 10 to the power minus 19 ka multiply kiya or K minus 23 hai. So, value adjustable. Ho jati. Okay, these are called Dolman's relation. The holes are related to EI minus EF and electrons are also related to EF minus EI. So, we now say since EI is above EF, holes are appearing, EI is away from EF. So, holes this is a p tile semiconductor, so you have holes in the conduction uh, valence band. But as you apply my plus VGS and you expect hole concentration to leave surface. Where they will go? Because of the electric field, holes will move away from the, sorry, I am sorry, I am sorry. Since the electric field is opposite this side, so holes will move away from this and will leave what? Depletion charge, okay, will leave depletion charge. What is depletion charge? Minus QNAXT, okay. These charges are essentially in this region. So, the band the bands start bending down because holes are moving away, E i is coming closer to E f. If the hole concentration start reducing, what will happen? E i will come closer to E f. E i is the mid band. So, both E c and E v will also follow E i. Is that point clear? The valence band and conduction band are E i is always 50 percent either side. So, if E i bends, E c E v also bends. Okay. Now, if E i is equal to E f, what will happen? In exponential 0, that is intrinsic. If E i is equal to E f, 
P and N equal to N i that is material becomes intrinsic. However, if E i goes below E f that is this become minus or E f minus become this what should what is that Boltzmann relation is saying? Electrons must appear that is the inversion. As you start applying V g s the band start bending as E i is above E f s you are holes concentration reducing but depletion layer is enhancing because acceptors are opened. As you further increase VGS bands further bend down to adjust to this VGS as it bends down and touches EI, EFS then we say material has become intrinsic and if you further apply VGS then EI crosses EFS and you expect electrons to come. So, this electron start appearing in the conduction band is that clear they start appearing in the conduction band this is inversion. But EI when it starts becoming inversion when EI just crosses EF inversion sets in few electrons will come because it has just crossed EI EFS. However, definition was threshold was that when this number of electrons bending is so much that the number of electrons here is same as number of dopant uh, acceptors only then we say inverse strong inversion is set in. This size is measured as the bending for E i, size is measured as surface potential. So, this is Q size E i bend how much is Q size surface potential. So, when the size will equal to please take it size is same as for when size is 2 5 1 5 here 1 5 here what does that mean the concentration here and n are same as p opposite now. So, 2 5 whenever surface potential becomes 2 5 we have a strong inversion ok is that clear to you this for a n channel device what a p channel device all of it will go about and there is an interesting thing. Another thing before we quit if this contains interface states where they will lie from conduction band to valence band there will be interface states at the interface. If I apply charge here now not only there will be charge in the semiconductor but there will be charge in the because some charge will be picked up by dangling ok. So, we say there will be interface states will start uncovering themselves ok. So, they will start sharing charge with metal charge whatever you expect some part of the charge will now go to interface and rest of the charge will go to the semiconductor. So, what will happen to psi s? Psi s will not be able to bend as much for the same VGS is that correct to you? If there are no interface charge all psi s will be reflected by VGS ok if increase this will bend now. But now there is additional mechanism which is changing the charge equations is that clear. So, what will happen to make strong inversion it may take longer voltage now is that clear to you. So, if the interface are larger some charge will be picked up by interface. So, you will require larger VGS to attend to this VT is that clear to you. So, inversion which is 2 5 in strong inversion case will appear now late why because initial charge was picked up by interface states as well and you apply and it will start picking some charge in the interface some will go to semiconductor that is psi s plus psi interface total will be the applied potential at the E i minus uh, E f s minus this. So, any V g s change now is not directly going to the semiconductor but it is also shared with interface states. So, that is our worry that the V t is varying as many states are here and as many below the semi uh, Fermi level and as many above the Fermi EI they are called donor states or accepted states and they will share the charge and if they share the charge the V t will vary with V g s. Is that now clear why I am so much worried about this D i t world? Because I see larger the d i t larger sharing will go to interface. So, my v t will become E 1 
larger and which I do not want. Why am I not, I'm inter not interested in that? Vgs minus Vt is the proportionality for the current. If Vt increases, my current goes down, my circuit fails. So, I am not interested. Okay. So, I am now told by people, kuch bhi karo, DIT reduce karo, okay. kuch bhi karo. Okay. How do we do it? It is a game. Okay. It is not so easy, it is not so difficult. In technology, there are good games played. Some things you do and you get and then you are left to think why do, how did you get. Next time you do, you do not get. Then you are again left to think why you did not get. Okay. So, it is very interesting the, because I keep saying silicon behaves as it wants. It does not behave the way you want. Okay. After many days, your hand at least if not brain actually picks up what silicon does. Okay. And it start following it. Okay, that is the interface. So my hand start interfacing with the process, and I know if I do this, it will happen. Okay, that is why technology cannot be learned on sheets. It can only be learned in the lab. Okay, do whatever. This is the only. That's why I am stressing so much on the models because that I can explain without going to the lab. Whereas actual technology, I cannot tell you do this and. Many will tell you, oh, so I have to do it. It is not possible. It is not possible. It is not possible. It is not possible. Because it is not guaranteed. Nahin, na. What he said and what you understood also is not the same. So, okay. so, it may happen that you will get up. Then you will go and say, I did this and he said, it cannot happen. No, no, sir, it happened. This is the result. See, show so. Oh, is it? Then he will put another theory. And another experiment. So, it keeps interesting work going on. This then you fix so gas in research. Khatam. So, that is how we keep doing research because this and this does not match. As long as it does not match, we both are happy. A core paper, a core citation, a core. So, this then match. Ho gaya, phir kya khatam. So, anyway, this is fun part in the course. Okay. So, now little quickly we go, we do not read this part right now. You just look for this. Abhi hai, minute. Please, if I increase VGS opposite side, what will happen? EFM will be above EFS and the bands will bend which side then? Upwards because now I am applying minus VGS and I expect positive charges. So, holes will come closer to so, larger the EI minus EF, larger will be number of holes. So, EI should move away from EF as much as so that larger number of holes are created. So, accumulation may kya hoga? Bands, bands, will, bands will bend upwards. Is that correct? But maximum how much they can go up to? Once the valence band touches EFS, it cannot cross. Is that correct? The valence band cannot cross EF, that is called degeneracy. Once you de degenerate case, if all carriers are possible only in the valence band and no more additions. Okay. So, once degeneracy reaches, nothing extra happens. But till then, bands, bands can bend upwards to excess holes. Please remember, if EI goes above, EI minus EF becomes larger means holes become larger in accumulation you need holes to the surface. Is that clear to you? So, in accumulation bands will bend upward in depletion the bands start going down and when EI crosses EF we say it is inversion initially till psi s is equal to phi f it is just at the age of inversion when psi s becomes equal to 2 phi f we say it is strong inversion and between psi s equal to phi f plus to 2 phi f is called weak inversion. Okay, Weak inversion. Is that clear? Is that now clear to you? Many people say that if you reduce Vgs below Vt, the current still flows. Is that clear? The reason is obvious. You are in a weak inversion. You are, you are crossed 2 phi f above, but you are not crossed E i equal to f value so far. So, current still start moving and this is called the leakage current simply because you are still in the weak inversion and weak inversion sub threshold currents will keep flowing. Okay. 
the problem with sub threshold for someone who there are two problems in sub threshold current one is power of course the other major issue sub threshold is in the design of a DRAM and now also in the NAND flash okay. This sub threshold problem is a serious issue for NAND circuits flash ramps ROMs and also in DRAM designs. So all this technique why I am relating you every time because I do not want you to feel that may sir we have kuch oxide karke dikha raha is nahi iska ek relation hai mere dimag mein. So all of you should realize that all things which we do has one goal ek Pentium 4 se upar achha processor banana hai okay. Why do you want to make better Pentium or better processor to design another better processor wo generation hai okay there is nothing more to it okay. okay. If I apply VGS, you can see from here, metal of course is a very good conductor, so very low resistivity material, so no drop we assume. So where the voltage will drop now? Partly in the oxide and partly in the semiconductor, is that correct? If I apply two resistor R1, R2 apply VG, part will go to R1, part will go to R2. So we say VGS is part will go to VOX and part will go to semiconductor size surface potential. But this Vox I do not know the way I show Vox is the band bending of the oxide band is essentially the Vox but that I do not know how much okay. So I must replace this Vox by some terms which I know okay. So that is the next thing which I want to do before I quit is how do I replace VGS term in terms of size plus some term which is not Vox but connected to the terms which I have, I know about. So I say from here as I just now said last time, if the D vector is continuous, what is D vector? Electric intensity vector D epsilon E is continuous, then epsilon S E S is epsilon ox E ox or epsilon S E X is epsilon ox by T ox into the, what is the electric field in oxide? V ox divided by T ox. So it is V ox divided by T ox. Is that okay? PGS is V ox plus I s. Then use D continuity epsilon s is E s is equal to epsilon ox V ox. I write E ox as V ox by T ox. So I get epsilon s that permittivity of semiconductor into electric field in semiconductor is a permittivity of oxide divided by oxide thickness into voltage across oxide okay. Now from this equation I write oxide voltage is epsilon S E S upon epsilon ox by T ox this is epsilon which is essentially epsilon S E S by C ox okay C ox is per unit area okay. However, by Gauss's law, epsilon S E S is how much? The semiconductor charge density Q S, this is Gauss's law. Okay. So Q S is minus epsilon S E S, this is how Gauss's law is defined. But how much is Q S? How do I calculate semiconductor charge? Q N A X D plus Q inversion, I know charges in the semi, I know everything in semiconductor but I do not know anything in oxide. So I said fine, thick hai. I will replace Vox by charges in equivalent charges in semiconductors. So I write user's process law, I write Vox is minus Qs by Cox. So what is Vgs now? Vgs is psi s minus Qs by Cox. At Inversion strong inversion size is 2 phi f, so Vt is 2 phi f minus Qs by Cox, where Qs is the bulk charge depletion before inversion sets in, strong inversion sets in, which is Q and D X D max as n substrate minus Q and A at P substrate. So this relation which we earlier derived, Vg, Vt is equal to 2 phi f minus Q bulk by Cox. What are the conditions we have applied here in doing so? Phi m s is 0, no work function difference and oxide charges are 0, is that clear? This is called ideal CV, this is called ideal CV, okay. 
from I sorry from ideal C V I will be able to get V T. So, uh, anything additional term appears here from experimental if I subtract this ideal that experiment the difference is what value I will get from that that is what my whole measurement technique is about. If there is additional Q by C of something this theory I know okay this values I know. So, I know my this value. So, I will actually see C V curve see how much shift it was from the ideal okay. The shift is whatever is the extra term is the shift from the ideal is that clear. So, the first thing we plot in the C V curve is ideal C V then on the top we plot experimental C V and the difference and where we measure we will see the difference is the additional term appearing in this terminology is that clear to you. So, this expression V j psi s minus q s is the only expression I use in all my C V measurements okay all my C V measurements. Please remember that will give me all kinds of parameters which I am looking for MOS system okay. I can measure phi mass also through that I can measure q ox I can measure q i t different techniques. There are 7 interface state measurement techniques we will only show you what is most famous among them is called quasi static or Berglund's method. There is a gray brown, there is a triangular sweep, there is a conductance Nikots, Nicole and Goldsberg technique, then there is a pure low frequency CVs and there are DLTS, the n number of ways you can evaluate DITs okay. Uh, however, we will only look into the simplest which is called quasi static very fast high frequency low frequency CV. And anyway, why we are not? I am not so keen about getting exact value because exact value doesn't help me anyway. I know how much maximum I, I need to get. Okay. I control only that. Even if it is ten to power eleven, I, I two into ten to power eleven, ten to power eleven is same for me. How much one order I have to reduce? Okay. So I am not so keen in process to know exact value. But or kisi course mein aisa mat kehna because they actually 1.875 into 10 to power they will ask you this okay. So, do not put it 2 into 10 to power 10 there put 1.87965 jo bhi calculator dikha te dikna wo bhot khush hote hai. In real life it does not matter okay. So, next time I will use this give you the CV techniques faster CV techniques and we will finish.